The African New Year is on the 23rd of September. Nature is, itself is an important witness as to the timing of the African New Year because even flowers begin to blossom at that time. Um, in, our, in our indigenous languages, it's known as Umandulu, going back to the very beginning, going back to the source when everything begins anew. And a lot of rituals were associated with the African New Year at the time. Um, it's important for us as African people to be able to define time and our relationship to it because time governs everything that we do. Time is determined, time determines when one is born, time determines when one dies, time differentiates the, the young from the elderly. Time governs even everything that we plan to do on a daily basis or going into the future. We, we talk about this, what I did yesterday, it's what I plan to do today. Time is sacred. So if we uh, continue to define it according to a Gregorian calendar and we're keeping alive the negative energies of Roman colonial oppressors. You've got Julius Caesar there, you've got Augustus Caesar there, August, July. You've got all these oppressors there and every time we mention them, every time we, we live out these months according to these people who were anything other than what we are and who are people contributed to oppression, our oppression, our colonization and so on. You're giving positive energy to something that should not be. And our calendar was never about individuals, it was about our relationship with the universe, our relationship with the cosmic. Umandulu is September, which says we're going back to the beginning. Everything is there, nature itself provides you 100% evidence to say this is the beginning, when the flowers begin to blossom anew. So it's very important for us to, to get back to that, not only because we're trying to find our space, we're trying to reclaim our space culturally, politically, socially, but also because it's important in terms of how we define ourselves as a people. And you've got to say, this is my foundation, this is my base from which I come. But our people are very hungry for you know, a sense of identity and a sense of who we really are. Because when you look at our political and historical backgrounds, a crucial component of colonization or oppression is the taking away of your self-value, your self-worth, which is rooted in your culture and in indigenous knowledge systems. So that is something that people easily identify with and, and resonate with the moment they hear it because they realize that this is what's been missing. Uh, this tells me a lot about who I am. This makes me understand where I fit into the universe. This makes me feel more spiritually aligned and connected, in fact, to, to the universe, to the cosmic. I think uh, there hasn't been enough exposure. Uh, we didn't have the necessary support you know, from the relevant stakeholders in arts and culture and so on and, and, and government. Um, and, and the private sector. The, you, know, the, you cannot uh, preach a message without the resources. You need infrastructural support. You need financial support to be able to spread the message. So it's something that I would like to see, in fact, you know, as forming part of a school curriculum uh, that says, you know, as part of life skills, in fact, life sciences should be about people knowing who they are before they even begin to learn about anything else. Even when you think about this, the, the problems that we have as a society and problems within the community, if people have a sense of belonging and, and they understand their self-worth and their importance not only in, in, in religious books that exist right, right now, that in itself will begin to, to lead to a change of mindset that is very crucial to, to a people um, who has supposed to transform socially and politically. What we're doing right now, fireworks on New Year's Eve on the 1st of January, is totally irrelevant. You put money into that, it has got no value, it brings you no spiritual or cultural value. People have got to start realizing that worth is not just uh, measured in terms of financial worth. There's something called spiritual currency, and that spiritual currency, if you do not have, you actually are bankrupt. It's a bankruptcy, bankruptcy of the soul. And what you're trying to do is to refuel the soul, to re nurture the self. When you've been an oppressed people, your sense of self worth is taken away from you. Which is why you find these examples whereby, for example, here I am as a business person and my brother Usipo Shabalala comes to me and he, keep, he presents a proposal. I don't have confidence in working with him. And then Kua Sport Hitler comes along and I don't even think twice, I don't do any type of SWOT analysis. I immediately feel I can go with this person simply because Sipo Shabalala is a reflection of myself. He reminds me of myself and I have no sense of self-worth because that's what apartheid has done to me, that's what colonization has done to me, to take away my sense of value. So it's very important for us to, that's the African calendar, the African New Year, anything that talks about who we are as an indigenous people, as the first people, is an important tool 
to the empowerment, to mental emancipation, because that we haven't achieved yet. The most important thing is to say that the journey has begun. And, you know, there, I know there are a lot of uh, self-help books out there, for example, The Secret and so on, and people enjoy these, these books that talk about, you know, self-empowerment or motivational talk and so on. But with the irony here that is what we don't realize is that many of these knowledge systems come from us. They've just been taken away, repackaged, and sold back to us. Ukoko Oshala Nayeka has so much of that knowledge that is already packaged in book form and exclusive books. Talk to your elders. Go to the village. Go and renew your soul. Go back home on occasion. And just make sure that you, you, you actually start to live the life of somebody who's trying to bring their culture alive. That's very, very important. If you don't know who you are, you can't possibly even understand how you fit into the world. Uh, you can only be, let's say for example now for a free South Africa, you can only be a global citizen if you are an African first, if you are a South African first. And you've got to understand in totality how to define yourself as an African. Who are we as a people? Because so much of us got lost politically and culturally during our own you know, political oppression. We lost so much of a sense of who we are, we lost our soul. And part of re-identifying re yourself and, and reinventing yourself based on your indigenous knowledge systems involves um, education like that to say, what does time mean to us? What, when is our new year? Um, what are our rites of passage? What do we have to do at which age? All of that is important in the growth of yourself spiritually. It's all about how we measure value in terms of our spiritual and cultural currency as opposed to what we see now as financial currency. We are all looking for a sense of closure in terms of, you know, yes, now I'm a liberated person, but am I truly mentally liberated? Do I really know who I am? Have I really gotten back to me what was taken from me? It's very, very important for us to be able to be spiritually aligned to the universe. It's very important for us to be able to get back our cultural tools that empowered us as a people and made us a strong people. It's important for us to see, I don't, no matter how, how excellent government policies might be, they cannot be implemented with a mindset that is not ready to receive. So you have to deal with that mindset. You have to change a mindset from that of a victim to that of an achiever in terms of our people, the previously oppressed people. In terms of our white brothers and sisters, they also need a change of mindset. They must stop coming, uh, thinking of us as being people who are going to save us from ourselves and redeem us from, from you know, who we are and so on. Uh, but for them to also realize the role that they play, that they too, in a sense, are victims of total ignorance and, and condescension. So it's, it's important for us to be able to, to, to find the correct steps to follow in terms of self-actualization, especially as a free people. You're not free if you have no sense of identity. You are a total slave without a sense of identity. So many of us feel like we are out of kilter. Spiritually, you feel like there's something that's just not right. You feel like there's a, there's a train that's about to leave a station and you're not getting on it. That's, that's the, the feeling of somebody who's like no sense, but no sense of identity. And here you are um, in a free South Africa where you as a black man, a black woman, is, has got the, the, the freedom of expression and choice and so on. But the one freedom that you don't have is that that says this is who I am and this is where I come from. And you live it as your life. You live that truth of who you are as a black person. Now, if you don't have that, and you're constantly living a, a, a bluff and a compromised lifestyle, you cannot possibly be somebody who's truly empowered. So your soul will be bankrupt. The advice I'd like to give to our leaders is that African leadership um, is, is not sustainable if it doesn't empower the individuals that you represent. You're operating from a false premise. If everything that you do doesn't get to the core of the identity of who those people are. And it's important for our people to get to the core of who they are, to, to have a real sense of self-value and worth, to understand the role that they've played spiritually, politically over the years, to understand where we even fit into uh, religious books that exist, to understand that we have the highest value, that we were there before everybody else comes from us. That type of leadership is sustainable.
because in that sense you now have you dealing with a community of people who are very complete in the sense of who they are and there are no deep-seated insecurities that are so easily manipulated into crime, into prostitution, everything else where people f operate and feel like there's actually no sense of a foundation. All I can say is that black men, black women, you're not free until you know who you are.